Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, welcome to KLC Studios uh, virtually. Um, we're excited to be doing demos tonight for the for the Portrait Society. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Susie Schultz is going to be uh, drawing, uh, demo and drawing tonight, and Basil Watson is going to be sculpting. Um, along with me, we're both going to be doing uh, sculpture demos. Um, our good friend Dee is modeling for us. So uh, he's, he's our inspiration for tonight. Uh, we're we'll get started. Um, so if you notice we just turned the model so normally when I'm sculpting the model will be turning or moving uh, kind of constantly because of the little bit of the uh, limitations of needing to keep things a little bit stable for the, for the zoom cameras uh, we're just turning him a quarter turn so for one you get a little bit different light you get a different view so me and Basil um, we basically need a full 360 view in order to do the sculpture. Um, profile is most important for me. That's why I was happy to spend a lot of time with that at the beginning. But eventually, you need to turn it or you'll kind of get stuck. So um, that's why I normally I would turn even every five minutes if I'm starting a piece or even quicker in the beginning. But mm -hmm. um, for the demos, like we're, we're doing about every 10.
Okay. Uh, well, Basil Watson, uh, Jamaican born, living in the United States since 2002, in Atlanta for the past 18 years. Um, been a sculptor all my adult life. And um, figure is my my passion is basically what I do. Um, and modeling in clay is my second favorite. My first favorite is pencil and paper. I like drawing as my favorite activity. and then switched to watercolor um, and then did that full-time for about six years before I started doing oils. So now I like experimenting with a lot of different medium. And tonight I'm doing a drawing. And so this is, this is what I've done so far. And I start off with just kind of getting the general, doing a lot of searching lines and getting the general features in the, in, the gen, in the right area. And of course, I'm having to go back and make some corrections. You can tell, you know, I had to redraw the outside of the head here. Um, but I like having a paper that has sort of an older patina. And so what I've done is I've toned the paper with Georgia clay. And it's just clay that I um, dig up outside my studio. And then I put water on and create a wash with the clay particles and then let it dry and then brush them off. And so I've toned several different sheets of paper. This is with Georgia Clay, and it's also using a walnut ink that one of my art models made and brought. So it just kind of gives an interesting thing to start with. This is the Georgia Clay as well. And I did a like a graphite wash. I have a, um, a pan of graphite that I can use with water. So it's just, you know, trying to use some different, um, trying to get some different backgrounds to make it have that sort of patina of age. So, okay, yeah. that's interesting, great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You're Thank welcome. You for being one of our yeah. artists. Oh, here. you're welcome. You're welcome. Kevin, they got another question for you. Sure. It says, can you talk more about the sticks you're using to support the clay? What are they? Do you pull them out at some time? And is the angle of insertion important? Uh, no, so the sticks are just uh, uh, bamboo skewers for drilling. You can get them at Kroger, Walmart, whatever. Um, and they do get pulled out. That's why I believe instead of burying them all the way in, there's a little bit left sticking out. So as the clay starts to firm up and holds its own weight, I'll pull these out and then they go away before firing. If they, they were left into it before firing it, it, they'd burn up, of course, but the clay shrinking around them would cause the crack. So typically, you know, doing a portrait, I really wouldn't get it this thick, this fast. Um, Obviously for a demo, you sort of have to, but normally I would just sort of build it like a pancake and really trace the profile. Um, and then I would allow that to firm up overnight at least. Um, and then that would be sort of like this rock hard core in there that then I would build everything out and nothing would stop. So, um, so we're sort of winging it a little for demo's sake, but the sticks are, um, 
the sticks are a great way to sort of get everything to hold its hold its shape. I use it a lot in in uh, figurative pieces when you're in terracotta for you know balancing limbs or keeping places attached and stuff like that. But they also work great for portrait. Paint. And he said he wants to paint you. I thought I could introduce you. Kevin and Basil, I got a question. Once you get the face in, do you just go back later and add the beard? Right. You go back later and add the beard? Yeah. So right now you're just kind of acting like it's not there. You're just trying to get his face in. Uh, I, I have to find different cues because normally I would use the chin related to the mouth and the nose and the eye and so on. So I would work here, but I focus a lot on the head back to get that structure so that I can come down to the chin and then do whatever I want with the beard. Well, come down through the mouth actually. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there's almost no chin. Do anything I want. So it's getting um, the structure here to this point okay. as best I can. When I put on the beard, it will give me another cue as to how rest of the structure works. Okay, thank you. Hmm? I need to measure. Oh. I think it's only there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, pretty much the same answer to that. More me about the the initial structure, the bone structure. So sort of finding and making my own chin for now, and knowing that I'm going to cover it up anyway. So it's you know sort of sketched in. I guess I would say at this point. He's got great bone structure to, to use for sculpture, it looks like, yes, from my drawing perspective. It's he does have a very great bone structure. When Kevin first saw him, he's like, I have to sculpt that guy. <laughs> yes. They say only people are better models. Yeah. 
Approach it from every angle. <laughs> you get down on the ground and then up above and look at every plane. Sculpture is it? Three dimensional. Everyone around it. Yeah, it's a robot. Very rich, my is getting up and coming down. <laughs> Not so easy. portraits of John Lewis that Kevin did um, the day that he passed away and he's selling them for a series of 10, 10 plasters for $400. For $400. But all the donations go to create so, a bronze. So that we can cast a bronze to give to the, the city? The Museum of uh, Civil Human Rights. Okay. Yeah. 400 each, yeah, of plasters, which will cover the cost of the bronze. Um, so the difference, so Kevin is a master of patina. So this looks like bronze, but it's not. It's not. Okay. Oh, it's not bronze? I thought you might think yes, so. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what is that? Um, on that? So he does yeah. a very similar chemical process that he does do with patina with with plaster to create the same thing, but he, the base coat is like a paint, a paint metal right, paint yeah. in it. But before we could afford bronze, yeah. plaster bronze, that is what he would do. And it was yeah. almost like you were getting hit the real thing.
guys. <laughs> um, so the question is often how it, how the sculpture start outside of the initial drawing and concept. Um, so a maquette, M-A-Q-U-E-T-T-E, is the beginning of pretty much every sculpture. And for Kevin, what he does is he'll get his inspiration from um, uh, online, from photographs, and then he will test what he is looking at to see if it's something that he'd like to do in sculpture. And then that becomes a maquette that's typically done in about an hour. It's very loose. Um, it still has an armature, which is this metal that you see. But this becomes the idea then. So then, because he sculpts from life, he has to find actual people that can do this pose <laughs> so that he can sculpt them. Um, so yeah. a maquette is Good. just the idea. That's why it's quick. Um, based on inspiration, like I said, that you could be flipping through a magazine even. So when you see, like if you can spin right there, like that tabletop, those are all potential sculptures that will be enlarged to this scale. He, with his following uh, on social media and his contacts with uh, dancers and circus performers, um, we actually do have two friends who live in New York that can do this pose. So we went to New York and we wow. worked with them and photographed them full 360. Uh, did some measurements and then when he's ready to put in, you know, the precise, like this is just, see how loose it is compared to, it's usually it ends up pretty refined. So to have all those details, he wants it to be accurate. So that's when he would have the models here to actually measure it and match. So that's the next step from a maquette. The good days are the ones that he comes to me and says, so do you want to pick which one gets to become a sculpture next? <laughs> um, so that's how the maquette. So um, a rubber mold, a mother mold. Uh, I have one that I can show you what that looks like. Um, so that whole thing will be covered in rubber and over a three, <clears throat> excuse me, a three day process. And once the rubber is dry, then they put on the plaster and fiberglass shell. And then once that's ready, they take it all apart, cut the rubber and peel it off. And then you're left with the clay, which is typically if it's water-based clay will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And then with oil-based clay, then they just put it in the clay warmer and reuse it. So it's all melted down. Wow. So this becomes all that's left of that. So then they take this, so these red bits, we have a wax room on the other side. Typically a foundry will do all of this, but Kevin does everything except for the actual metal pour himself. So they take this shell off and they open, see that slit? Mm -hmm. They open up the rubber and they paint in a wax over certain like levels and density and what i mean there's science to it um and then it produces another copy but in wax so with that wax any imperfection that was in the mold any bubbles any errors that may have happened they have to fix that so that that's considered the second time the piece is being sculpted because you're going through and you're making the same tool marks with your with your um, sculpting tools, but with, you have to heat it up. So, so you, do you usually have some of those you have to address? Is there always something to be done? Yes. I, as far as I know, and, and I've seen, there's always a bubble or mm -hmm. two, or um, also with Kevin's stuff, you know, the hands are so small. They are. And by the time it, you know, the when it comes out of the, this, the, although like this hand came out very nicely but sometimes you know the fingers won't be exact yeah. so they have to build that back up in the wax so then that wax goes to the foundry the foundry coats that in a shell it's like a kind of like a sand type material slurry um they dip it in there and once that dries and it's to the thickness then they melt out the wax that's why it's called the lost wax process so then they take that negative or positive I always forget which mm -hmm. one but and then that's what the bronze well they have to make gates gates are 
So those little hands, they have to add these little tunnels and separate off arms and parts of it and then cast all the, remember when I was showing you up there? So the bronze comes back to us in pieces. So then he has to take all of those and weld it all back together and then re-sculpt the third time with Dremel tools that will mimic the same texture as the original sculpted um, clay a lot of and hide work. all the weld mm -hmm. marks. A lot it's, of work. it's insane how many hours. Just the clay, the big clays are, it's hard for me to track him. I've tried every way <laughs> known to man, but he'll work on five or six things, but it's close to between 60 and like 110 hours, just for the clay. Just for the clay. Just for the clay. That's before the mold. And then you have to do again on the uh, yep. wax. Oh, yeah. Yep. And the wax, it, depending on how, how yeah. much. I will, I'll send you guys a link to made. the, the oh. documentary that we did, the six minute film following one sculpture through the whole process. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah that'll put that on shed so much light on, on the process. I hope that helps. And what yeah. kind of